What's up, Fresh Coast Gaming fans? We're here today at Gen Con. We've been here since Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now it's Sunday. Uh, we've got some cool interviews with some of our favorite artists, uh, game designers, uh, modelers, everyone who produces some awesome stuff. So we have a couple of interviews for you guys. Check it out. I can tell you uh, this has been an awesome experience. We're here in front of the Privateer Man Award. He's doing awesome. So check it out. Have a good one. Thanks. What's up, Fresh Coast Gaming fans? We're here with uh, Simon from Privateer Presses, and he's going to just tell us uh, five minutes about uh, what they're doing here at Gen Con and uh, their experience and how it's been going. Sure. Uh, I'm Simon. I'm the marketing coordinator at Privateer. Uh, we're here at Gen Con 2014. It's been a really cool year for us. Uh, we got a lot of exciting new stuff. Uh, we're debuting Level 7 Invasion, which is the latest uh, release in our series of very successful board games. Uh, it's kind of a global defense, semi-cooperative thing, uh, fighting off the alien invaders, kind of the culmination of a Level 7 story so far. Uh, so that's been really cool to see. Uh, what else we got? We've got uh, Faith and Fortune, which is the new core set for War Machine High Command. Uh, what was included in that? So that is four new decks. It's a core set with the core rules. Uh, it plays against the other High Command games. Uh, it includes decks for the conversions of Ceres, the Retribution of Syra, and uh, two mercenary pack decks uh, for Four Star Syndicate and Highborn Covenant. So uh, that's going to add a whole bunch of new stuff to, uh, to High Command. Do they have any like super unique special rules or anything like that that really dis make yeah. them distinct? Uh, not quite as much as you would see in the War Machine stuff, but you'll see some interesting things, especially in the convergence rules. So uh, I think it's going to add a lot to the game. We also got Castle of the Keys, which is the new small box expansion for Hordes High Command. Adds new Wind of War deck cards. It's pretty cool. Um, and of course, we have lots of uh, Horde stuff here. Uh, we have debuted a bunch of the new Warlocks from Exigence, which is coming out this fall. We have Xerxes 2, Absalonia 2, uh, the new Circle Orboros Borderlock, uh, Braticus Thrall, who's he's pretty rad. He's going to have the, the stones and everything. Uh, if you have the chance, he's in the case. You can also the painted miniature. What has the, the fan response been to all that kind of stuff? Really positive, yeah. Like, we haven't been able to keep any of it in stock this weekend. I think we have a few Jaga Jagas and Helga the Conquerors left, but not too many. Um, and is this the first time you can buy all the Cephalix, or were they available earlier? They were available at Lock and Load, actually. Okay. So, uh, but we had the, the, the bundle deal here again, so uh, I think we're sold out of those, too. So uh, yeah. it's been a really good weekend for us. And, of course, we also had Monster Nomicon, which is our new supplement for the Iron Kingdoms role-playing game. Uh, Thursday, but uh, pretty excited about that. And that works for both Full Metal Fantasy and Unleashed, which is coming out soon, right? Yeah, Unleashed is going to be out sometime probably early 2015. Uh, that's going to be a new core game for Iron Kingdoms. Uh, it's going to explore the, uh, the wilderness of the world. We're going to play things like Pharaoh and Gator Men um, and kind of explore the more savage, weird side of uh, Western Amor. That's awesome. So what's up? I know you guys are going to PAX in a few weeks, right? We'll be there in two weeks, less than. Is it? Do you think it's going to be somewhat similar to what you have here? I think we'll have a lot of the same stuff there. We probably won't have to. We, uh, we did a. We always do a RAM tie-in, uh, the RAM bar right here in Indianapolis. Uh, every year we uh, partner with them. They make a beer, we theme it, and uh, we give them art, and uh, we make a model now. So this year we had the Blighted Bather. Uh, we haven't been able to keep her in stock. She uh, she uh, can be subbed in as an alternate. Uh, spawning vessel for a Legion of Everblight players, or she's just a cool figure to collect and paint. Right, for sure. Um, and I don't, I don't know if we'll have her packs. We might. Uh, we usually will have the uh, the beer models available in the online store mm -hmm. at some point in the future during events. So she, I can't be so sure about, but if you're going to be at PAX Prime, good chance we'll have some of those uh, pre-release warlocks at the show. Did they have the Gen Con, some of the exclusives here on the web store as well? Yeah, all okay. on the web store. So that was cool. That's really awesome that you guys do that because I know some of my friends aren't able to get here and yeah. getting Zerk to it. He comes out in uh, November? I believe November, but don't quote me on that. And that, that's really awesome that, you know, you come here and you get something cool. Wait in line, talk to some gamers that are really like yourself, you know. Um, yeah, Gen Con's just a great place to, like, you know, meet other people who are passionate about the same games and stuff that you are, so. Can you talk a little bit about the pins? I know I've been wearing, I have seven or five or five between five and seven pins on this weekend sure. people are loving them i go to these all these other booths and people are saying where are those from what are those if you want to talk just a little bit yeah. about some of the, the reception and how those have been going yeah privateer pins uh is a new thing we launched at lock and load earlier this summer um basically it's a pin trading program uh basically it's a pin trading program where uh you can buy the pins from us and then you know if you're looking for specific 
specific ones, you can trade them. Uh, we kind of built it in a lot of ways. There's, there's different ways you can collect the pins. If you obviously want to collect them all, that's great, you can. Um, we know a lot of people are doing that too, but you know, if you just want to collect scorn pins, you got the scorn pins. I see you've uh, I have a, a lot of them. Card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we've got a line of chibi versions of our warlocks and war casters. If you want to collect the chibis, you can do that. So like there's a lot of ways to like get into it if you don't want to jump in the whole hog. But uh, it's been great, you know. Um, we had some limited edition pins for Alan's Health the Booth. Like if you want a lucky 200 we got Monster Nomicon, uh, you got a cool uh, just like this guy. It was a glow yeah. in the dark pin. It's so right. And uh, that, that glow in the dark on his hair was intense. Like you could glow it was glowing in broad daylight. Um, so we got some cool things like that, a lot of collecting. We see a lot of people popping up on uh, websites doing and trading here and there. And uh, yeah, it's been really great. People are really digging them. Uh, we're sold out of way more of the pins than we thought we were going to be. So uh, we'll probably bring more next year, it looks like. One last topic for you. I really appreciate your time. Uh, if you just want to talk a little bit about War Machine Tactics, where that is yeah. right now, uh, what is your company's responsibility still for it? Like, uh, I know you released the models already, but anything else that you'd like to talk about War Machine sure. Tactics? Um, you know, War Machine Tactics is the video game. We kickstarted that last year. Uh, we are currently up on early access on Steam right now. Uh, we are moving towards our final launch date in tentatively November when the single player campaign is done. But we released keys to all of our backers uh, just this past week. We kind of do a final stress test and get some final balance stuff worked out. Uh, so we've been paying a lot of attention to those guys. Uh, we work really closely with our partner White Moon Dreams. They're our game development studio in Los Angeles. Uh, they're not here this weekend because they're very busy finishing the game. But uh, myself and Diane Ferrer at Privateer have been demoing it at the booth all weekend. And uh, we've got the current build up on the game. If you see the game at Gen Con, that's the build that's currently up uh, on your computer right now. So uh, we're getting there. It's definitely coming along. Um, we're just finalizing stuff at this point. The reaction's been great. It's selling like hell on Steam. And, uh, that's awesome. The future looks really great for it. That's great. And I know this has probably been very exhausting for you, just being here. I know what it's like to be on all the time at a convention sure. for my work stuff. Not They're hospital employees. They're not crazy gamers. But if you just want to talk for just one or two minutes about the Gen Con experience, what it's like to maybe be on the other side of the, the whole thing and, and what you've thought about it. Yeah, um, this is my seventh Gen Con for Privateer, my eighth ever. Um, I think, you know, I work with the community a lot uh, at Privateer. I'm the, the marketing coordinator. I do all of our social media. Um, so I think one of my favorite parts about coming to Gen Con is getting to see everybody in person, you know, getting to meet people like you guys, uh, seeing guys go to our fan podcasts. Uh, people just want to show off their cool painted miniatures. Everybody's come out to play an Iron Gauntlet, the events we have here. Um, it's just, it's super gratifying to, like, you know, actually get to meet everybody and see how excited everybody is about what we're doing. And, you know, we kind of recharge for the year off of that. Like, it's a lot of good energy here. Um, you know, it's just great. It, it's a tiring weekend, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's just cool to, to meet our awesome community. Any hints at some cool new stuff coming out very soon? Very soon, not too much, but I would say pay attention come February when the TempleCon rolls around. We're going to have a lot of cool things to show off in 2015. Awesome. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Have a great trip back, okay? You too. Hey Fresh Coast Gamers, we're here uh, with Justin of Secret Weapon Miniatures and he's just going to tell us all about uh, what his business is doing right now and then a little bit about his Gen Con experience as well. So take it away Justin. Having a great time at Gen Con. We've got the uh, Tablescape styles ready to ship. I got to confirm with War Games Factory uh, actually two nights ago what the Australia and UK numbers were because they are separating the shipment. Very excited about that. Uh, also coming up we've got the new uh, Malice uh, RPG accessory line coming out. So dungeon tiles, campsites, uh, sword shields, that sort of thing for your RPG experiences. And Gen Con has been great. This is the first time I've had a chance to actually get uh, the game I helped design for Ironbox Games um, out the door. We've been demoing Angry Sheep over here. Ten big cases of that going out the door for Gen Con. Lots of people coming by saying, you know, hey, we heard we had to come play Angry Sheep. So that's been exciting uh, and lots of fun. Totally different experience for me, of course, because I'm usually here with this stuff. Uh, but down here with the War Store, uh, having a great time. And yeah, getting to see Gen Con again. Always happy to come. It's quite a thing. Um, and then in two weeks, I'll be at Nova Open teaching uh, 13 classes over three days. So if you never hear from me again, look for me under a table in DC. Did you do any classes this week? No, I don't do classes when I come out to Gen Con, at least not at the moment. I'm still trying to get things sorted and settled in the future. It might happen. Uh, now that we've got a crew that can handle the booth and all that for me, I'm hoping to come out next time and either do classes uh, upstairs or maybe even in the booth if we can justify the space. Yeah, this is my first Gen Con and I was amazed at the size. I mean, everywhere you walk down here, oh, it's Gen yeah. Con. This is just incredible. I mean, it's like, it feels like half the city. Uh, we are big enough that we chased out the second largest convention they had was this big motorcycle rally that came to town every year for years. And we chased them out of town because Gen Con is so big, the city said, you need more space and we'll give it to you instead. 
That is a crazy thing. So uh, you said Tablescapes will be shipping out soon in the next few months. Any minute now. Um, <laughs> what is the next steps for Tablescapes? The retail experience, that kind of thing. Uh, I've got my inventory coming in so that we can get the retail product out. I'm really aiming, really, really, really aiming uh, to have the retail purchases up at least for pre-order in October. Uh, we will start taking pre-orders as soon as we hit 50% uh, of the backers shipped. We will start taking pre-orders because we don't expect backer shipping to take more than three or four weeks tops. Uh, means we'll be able to keep on that cycle and get everything to everybody before Christmas. That is the goal. We're moving forward on that. Um, and we'll start doing the uh, Malice RPG line as well. Probably in September here. I've just got to get back to Nova Open, get settled, and get that launched as well. Those so would be the, be going now. the dungeon tiles. Yeah, that's the uh, resin RPG accessories. Awesome. And uh, you have been doing some videos, and I think you just started doing some more videos, right? That's Can right. you talk the a little about, about that? Coming. Um, I filmed the first six two-minute tutorials. Aims to get those scheduled for publication uh, prior to Gen Con. But Gen Con. Uh, <laughs> so that didn't happen as soon as I get back. I'm going to queue those up so that they'll be able to go out one every week. Uh, but they've actually been running about three or four minutes. Name two minute tutorials. It's so cute, so we'll keep it. What are some of the topics that the, the viewers can see? Uh, the first ones that we came through are the when you're figure painting, the difference between a wash and a glaze, how to weather brass using ammonia, uh, which ties into that Remora project. Those of you who watch are making the uh, uh, fifth element uh, food flying ship inspired Remora from Industrial Mechanic. It's going to be a fun project. Lots of brass lanterns on that that I had to weather up, so I show that off. Uh, what else have we got? Um, a couple of basic pigment things, like how to make a pigment wash and do real quick just dust washes on your model. Um, all very simple things. As much as I like to make really in-depth tutorials where I talk about the technique start to finish, uh, in this case what I'm doing is taking the emails I get on a regular basis where somebody's just like, how would you add dust to this? And going, oh, let me just make a video. Boom, 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 awesome. like that. And, and you also have a video up there on how to do tablescape tiles from someone else, right? Uh, not a video at this point, but Matthew Fontaine, right. um, incredible painter, is actually going through. He's creating step-by-step -step tutorials for us for each and every one of the themes uh, to two points. He's actually doing it saying, this is where most of you are going to take your tiles. They look great. If you're a crazy set of a gun like me, you can go nuts and really get carried away, and this is what they look like. <laughs> yeah. um, and I will admit that even for me, Matthew's finished pieces where he takes them all the way to 11. It's crazy. <laughs> They're just crazy, but I can't wait because all those tiles are going to come back to us and they'll be on display in the booth by the time we hit Adepticon. We put up our big tablescape display. You'll be able to see Matthew's work there too, and they are amazing. Awesome. And you'll be teaching classes at Adepticon as well? I will be well. teaching classes at Adepticon. Uh, my partner at Ironbox Games, uh, Clem Kevin Clark. Um, yeah, we went to Adepticon this year. Every time I came to the booth, he's like, no. Go. <laughs> go teach your classes. Teach classes next year. Go to the things that you can do. We've got the booth. Anything else you want to tell us? Uh, any hints? on some super cool new products coming out from Seeker Weapon. Super cool new products. All of our roundlet bases are getting uh, 80 millimeter so that you can add them to your Relic Knights Force just like I am. We also have at this event we launched the uh, Esper Crystals so we are starting a line of translucent resin products and we started with Esper Crystals for Relic Knights. Those are going to be all over my Relic Knights bases. I recommend putting them on yours. Uh, Soda Pop Miniatures will have those for Relic Knights. We'll have them launched uh, probably middle of September here. Again after Gen Con, got to recover. That takes time. Nova Open takes time recover from that too. So as soon as that's done and I'm recovered, we'll have the uh, first of our translucent resin products up. After that, yeah, big, deep, cute, full of stuff. That's like next year, right? It's like next year at that point. We have, uh, with all the money and all the time tied up in uh, Tablescapes, uh, new product launches, new product development, really ground to a halt. Uh, it's really been, what, five, six months since we've got a major product release, which is really too bad. But had to focus on Tablescapes to make sure we got them to a little later than not so much later. Hey, so we've it's got worth a waiting for. a list of new releases that sure. we're trying to work our way back through now. Two sure. pages, line by line, single space and stuff that we're working on. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Justin. Okay, my pleasure. Have a good trip back to again, California. So this is Mike here again at uh, Fresh Coast Gaming. We're here at Gen Con, and I have met Carlos from Corvus Belly, and he's going to tell us a little bit about Operation Ice Storm, uh, the new edition of Infinity, any cool new models that are coming out, and maybe a little bit about his Gen Con experience. Thanks, Carlos. Hello there. My name is Carlos. I work in Corvus Belly. I concept designer, graphic designer, tester, uh, spokesperson, maybe uh, <laughs> media guy. I do a lot of stuff, as everybody else in Corpus Valley who makes a lot of different work. So, 
questions. Yes, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Operation Ice Storm, uh, when it will be out for retail sale and, and what's in, included Operation in it? Operation Ice Storm by the mid-September it will arrive for stores. It's the most useful box for getting into the game. In fact, I have the experience here at Jenkor of introducing people into the game and they really need that product because uh, the range is so huge right now, Infinity, that uh, some people get confused. They don't know uh, what to buy first or how to begin. The, the Ice Storm box, the, the quality that it has is that uh, you don't, it doesn't require anything else. Everything is inside that box. Just focus on that box. It will answer all the questions. Uh, you won't have to look any further. And it has it's a very beginner-friendly box. That, that's the, the, the best quality that it has. It makes it easier to jump in the game. It has uh, cardboard buildings in there, right? For the, the train on the... Yeah, the they have the size of all the Infinity boxes. So you can put the, those buildings over the boxes and the building gets stronger. That's, uh, we're happy with that idea. It works very well. And the, the models inside, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the two factions that are included and the pu and their pewter, I believe? And there? Uh, the, the models, are they metal or are they resin? Or They're metal models. The metal. And they are uh, Panoceania against Nomads. It's the Panoceania starter pack, the new starter pack that is not available yet, but it will be. But it also has a, a seventh miniature that is exclusive from the box, that is a Father Knight. That won't be, uh, no one will be able to purchase that precise uh, sculpture separately. Okay, there will be another Father Knight figure, but not that one. The same happens with the Nomads, it's the other army. They have the starter packs and then a seventh miniature, which is the Reverend Custodian, that is exclusive from the box. There will be another Reverend Custodian sculpture in the future, but that one is his box exclusive. Then, if you pre-order the box, and that is something that I will um, focus in, pre-order the box, because it will cost the same, but it will include another extra miniature, limited edition, the CSU, the Corporate Security Unit, which is awesome, because it's another miniature, okay? So those are two armies, red versus blue, Nomads versus Panoceania. An iconic, an iconic image to, to play with. So the box includes a rule book that includes all the necessary rules for just playing that battle. Nothing else, not, 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 we don't want players to get confused having the whole stand of the whole rule. Just a necessary play for, 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 mm -hmm. stuff for understanding the game. Because I've seen, I, I, I work with many new beginners and they, the amount of information is huge. So just focus on the necessary stuff for them. They they really needed this problem. And, and that kind of leads us into our next question. For those who have already have the game and have played it and love it, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the third edition rulebook, um, availability online, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and maybe a little bit about updating the website because you have an army builder built into your website as well. Okay. So, third edition is coming. In fact, Operation Ice Storm is the first glimpse of third edition because it's third edition rules. But later this year, probably in December, okay, the third edition book will, will arrive. Okay, if the actual second edition book is this, third edition book will be double size, okay, double thickness. We will probably split it in two different volumes, fluff and rules. Okay, so apart from that, uh, there will be a pre-order offer, of course, and it will, be, uh, it will come with an incredible miniature that I cannot reveal yet, but it will be beautiful, for sure. So there will be a pre-order uh, period, probably during October, I guess. And you can order that from a retailer as well? Yes, okay. Infinity is very retailer, distributors, the local gaming store friendly, okay? We allow them to have the pre-order offer. So people can pre-order the, the book or iStore in the local gaming store, okay? We work for, with four distributors in the USA, and we work also with very successful online stores. So there's, there are many different ways to get the, the, the book and also iStore, okay? With the extras, okay? Which I always say that the extras are, are there for you, so them. Mm -hmm. And uh, just one last thing, I know we've taken up a couple of minutes of your time and we really appreciate it. Um, the Army Builder website portion of that, is that going to be updated for third edition? Is of course, it? Okay. of course, because the Army Builder is 
the official, an official piece of, of application or official software that is uh, necessary for tournaments. Okay, if the army list is uh, army legal, you know, using the software, then it's legal for tournaments. You know, it has a button that, that checks the list and says if it's legal or not. Mm -hmm. So that, of course, will be updated probably on January the first, uh, 2015. So all the troops from the edition will be there. Oh. The classic troops with the new cars and all the stuff. But something that I have to point out is the third edition does not nullify the other expansion books. They work together. They are complementary. Okay. Uh, so human sphere and campaign paradiso still work with third edition. That is something that, that, that must be said. Obviously. That's great. So the books that you've already bought and paid for aren't just invalidated immediately. We don't want to invalidate products. That sounds great. Okay. We are just re uh, re sculpting the basic rule book with another that is much better, better translation more uh, beginner friendly, more approachable, that cleans very much the rule system that we are all agreeing with, that uh, took a lot of time and work, but we know that it's much better and will generate much better tournaments and community and everything is getting better. Awesome. So we're uh, looking forward to deliver a very satisfying really. Do you have, just uh, one last question, do you have any interesting things that have happened here at Gen Con? What is your favorite part about it? I know you obviously want to get home as well. <laughs> You're probably exhausted. Uh, I enjoy being very much in the USA. The food is delicious. <laughs> uh, well, this year was crazy. I mean, what I can tell you is that on Thursday, we have, we have uh, 300 boxes of ice. 300? And a few less of uh, Tabitas and, and Pentecileas, but Tabitas and Pentecileas sold out in the first hour. Wow. That was a new sculpt for those two characters, right? Uh, well, Tabita is something new that we decided okay. to pull out in the last week or before uh, Jenkins. We, we decided to make a miniature of the actual cosplayer, Tabita Lions, that came with us. That's so right. That was something funny to make, limited edition miniature, but pe people got very excited and interested in that. And also the um, Pentecilea uh, bootleg that was something special that we wanted to have at Django, okay? Everything sold out in the first hour. The, the 300 boxes of Operation Eister, we can even say that they sold everything in, on Thursday. So um, we can even say that on Thursday all the stuff from Django was already sold. So we may, may have made like $40,000 in one day. Wow. <laughs> so it's something impressive. We're happy because for, for, for Infinity it's very expensive to come to Gen Con and all that. But this year was incredible. I mean, I have like a, 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 a slow motion flashback of, on Thursday, people coming through the corridor like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I guess you could say the future is very bright for Infinity right now. Yes, uh, very exciting year and very, very bright horizon in front of us right now. Awesome. Very happy with it. Well, thanks, Carlos, and you guys have a great trip back, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. This is Michael from Fresh Coast Gaming. We're here to talk to Zachary from Collapsible Construction, and he's going to tell us all about these really sweet models that he has here. So, Zach, if you would take it away. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you look over here, a couple of years ago, I started playing some skirmish miniature games, and when I started doing that, everything, I like the fact that you can take your skirmish teams with you anywhere, but then you have these 2D mats, and everything, every time you play miniature games, it's always better if you can play with 3D terrain. So I started trying to think of, is there some way I can take that 2D mat and then turn it into something that will pop up, and you, but you can take it with you anywhere you want to go. So that's when I started thinking about, actually the first pieces that I did were my oil refinery pieces here. These collapsed down completely, but then when I decided to go with first was actually going to be the castle sets. So and those came look, to retail first? Well, I'm sorry, what was that? Those came to retail first? Yes, the, the ones that came to retail first were the castle sets. These ones are just about ready to start sales with. When you actually buy them, this whole castle that you see right down here, actually when you're not playing with it, fits inside of this three ring binder. Because everything comes pre-packaged in these plastic sleeves like this. When you're ready to play with them, you just pull them straight out of the sleeve. Hold on one second, actually just sure. right out here. You actually pull them out of the sleeve. And when you're ready to set it up, you just pop it up like that. Pop in the sides. 
quick tug at the top there, and then you have a wall that's ready to go. Awesome. The whole system is modular, so you can put all these things together, but if you just need some small parts, you can just do small parts instead. And if you look, everything is holding up, is, is, is heavy, is strong enough to be able to hold this guy on them. It's a fully pewter old Ralph Partha or something yeah, like that? Yeah, he's, he's full pewter, I think he's full pewter, but he, yeah. he definitely weighs probably it's about a, a pound or two. But everything out here, including the catwalks, if you get the, the center of gravity right on it, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, the catwalks can hold them up too. Sure. Everything out here can do it. Some of the ones, like this, the huts here that I have, the freestanding huts, when you're not using them, you just put them down, or you squeeze them out, and then when you actually want to play with them, you put them down like this, and then you just let go, and they're ready to go. And these, they have, uh, if you want to show the viewers, they have printed on the inside as well in the corners, so I know oftentimes I've, I've used paper craft terrain, which this is not paper craft, um, but you can see how it's all printed all the way around, so there's no white corners, uh, you can damage them if you'd like, etc. If you decide you want to cut chunks off of them to make ruins, everything still looks good inside and out. So if you want to uh, just tell us your business name and your website where we can where we can get you and then any updates that you have coming up. Okay, uh, right now the best place to find me actually is on Facebook with Collapsible Construction. The actual name of the business is Four Face Buddha and I'm currently about to get my fourfacebuddha.com webpage up and running and pretty soon give me a day or two you'll actually be able to find me at Zachary at fourfacebuddha.com. Um, I'm going to have a Kickstarter before the end of the year, Kickstarter, I promise okay. everyone. It will be before the end of the year to start getting some of these pieces into larger production. I spent enough to actually get it. I wanted to work through my production issues on my own, and now I want to start being able to show it to other people. What other kind of sets are you working on for the Kickstarter? Well, for the Kickstarter, I want to expand the sci-fi line. So actually, these are going to be larger, and I'm going to have cargo containers. For the fantasy line, I actually have like, my Wizard's Tower program prototype over here that you can see. It'll cover the and then also I have a boat that I'm making. I have an inn that I'm going to be building that's playable inside and out. I also want to get other accessory pieces actually ready for the castles like the bridges, the stairs, things like that so you can start getting really cool interesting shapes ready. And what's the price on most of these sets that we're looking at? As I just said, I sell everything by the sleeve with this and so it's you, you don't have to buy a full set. You can just buy one sleeve depending on what you want and they're usually around $20. So, but right now I'm discounting my towers because I want to get to my next generation, which is going to be a better design, better product. Um, so this entire castle right here, not including these ones, this entire castle ends up being right around $70. Awesome. So try to keep it as affordable as possible. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about your, is this your first Gen Con that you've been here? Or this is the second Gen Con I've been to. The first one was last year where actually I was over in the Entrepreneur's Alley. And it was more just to show people this is the first time I've actually been trying to sell things. I will be back next year with a booth at least twice the size. And so I'll be sitting, I just am going to have a bunch of stuff ready for next year. How's your experience been this year? Great, actually. Yeah? I get really positive uh, feedback from customers. Had other people come over asking about custom work, all sorts of crazy stuff. So, uh, do you do custom work? I do do custom work. Okay. I will do custom work. Just contact me at Facebook at Confident Construction and uh, we can talk about it. So. And I will, for viewers, I'll put uh, his Facebook link in our in our YouTube channel. I actually liked it last night. So I'll check it out and send, send the link. So thanks, Zachary. Anything else you'd like to say to the viewers? I think that's it for right now. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah.